please. I am uh, plodding on in my uh, theme of stewardship, not because I don't think you're hearing me, but is, there is just so much to say about it that um, it's important that we don't just come and, and hand over some money and think that takes care of it. Um, there is a, such a heart attitude involved that I wanted to share with you this morning the very concept to bring things together with money and confidence in God. Let's, um, let's explore this together. And Psalm 52, 7 says, Lo, this is the man that hath made not God his strength. He's looking at someone who has failed. This is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. You know, uh, one of the verses most often misquoted uh, is that uh, money is the root of all evil. <clears throat> it's not doesn't what it says. But it does say that the love of money is the root of all evil. And the, and the concept of the root of all evil is is it is the root that's springing up of all kinds of evil is the idea. Um, be careful what you trust in. Be careful what you love. We use that word love. You know, we love my wife. I love my hot dog. What? How, how, how are these words connected here, see? And um, let's recognize that what we're loving and what we're treasuring ought to be something that's worthy of it. To believe in God, to trust in God, is to place your confidence in him. I trust him, you see. I believe him. I believe his promises to me. Now this is the very heart of personal worship. As I was saying, Christ said to the woman at the well, that it's not whose ritual you're following. He says, the true worshiper, the worship that God desires, is in spirit and in truth. So it's according to the word of God, it's following what he says, but it's done deep within your heart, in spirit. So it gives us a clear instruction toward money if you apply it that way. So first of all, let's look at the blessedness of trusting God. <clears throat> Just relying on him. Psalm 2, 12b. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Blessed means that God will bless you. God will add his blessing to your life. I don't like saying, would you pray and, and bless the food? or ask God to bless the food. Uh, I don't know where that came from, asking the blessing. Uh, why do we think that God needs to do something to the food? Are we a little afraid of that food? Are we a little afraid of who made that food? I don't know. Uh, we th in the Bible, it talks about being thankful for your food, saying thanks for you know, giving thanks. Um, but blessing actually speaks of adding something to it. Now, we can be a blessing to God, and we certainly don't add anything to him. But uh, it is according to his way, and therefore a blessing. Psalm 34, 8. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. If you can rely on him. Psalm 84, 12. O oh, Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. And then Isaiah, great prophet, Isaiah 26, 3, that will keep him in perfect peace. How do you get perfect peace? Whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Why are you not in perfect peace? Peace, because you're worrying. Why are you in dis despair? Because of what might happen. <laughs> but... If your mind is stayed on him and he's unchangeable and you trust in him and he is able to control everything, you'll be in perfect peace. And let me close with Jeremiah 17, 7. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. 
We don't just trust what he does. We trust him. He is my hope. So if you can grasp that image of the blessedness of trusting God, then let's move on and ask what is the importance of trusting God. Again, this is something that happens in you. This isn't a, some ritual you perform. This isn't some marching forth in robes or something, you know, in a, in a ceremony of the church. This is you. Well, the importance is found in the Bible by, first of all, we are warned not to lose it. <clears throat> when the apostle wrote to the Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, uh, the situation was that Christianity was coming under, in Rome, they, these were Jewish Christians uh, living in Rome, and in Rome, Christians were beginning to be persecuted. But the Jews had a long-standing pass from the uh, from Rome. So these Jewish Christians saying, you know, if we were smart, we would just stop calling ourselves Christians. We just go back to being Jews, and uh, we don't get persecuted. So with this, um, he warns them. Hebrews 3, 6 and 14, but Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. He's saying here that the, the Christian who truly believes in God continues to trust him. Doesn't just back out. Verse 14, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. You trusted him to get saved. Are you losing it now if you might lose some of your stuff or be persecuted or even killed? No, trust him. Again in Hebrews 10.35, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. You see, it's possible. Peter, trusting in Christ, walked on water until he saw the waves and the wind blowing us around and he says, what in the world am I doing? And he sank. He cast away his confidence. Now, it doesn't make you lose your salvation, but it certainly means you lose the blessings. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Don't lose it. So we're warned not to lose it, and we are urged to have it in prayer. Uh, why sometimes do we find that we pray a thing and uh, nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens? Well, perhaps it's because we're not asking, trusting him for it. We are urged to have it in prayer, the key to answered prayer. Ephesians 3.12, in whom we have boldness and access. We get to actually access him with confidence by the faith of him. James 1, 6, and 7, but let him ask, he's talking about praying, let him ask in faith nothing wavering. Now this doesn't mean you, you don't have any hesitation at all. That's, that's kind of an a overkill thing. This is, this is where you have faith and then you don't have faith. That's the wavering. It's back and forth. Uh, va vacillation. Nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed, for not let, uh, let not that man think he will receive anything of the Lord. He talks about him as the double-minded man. And the word minded is actually the word for soul. It means that you have two, two minds about the thing. You have two wills about it. You have two uh, choices of, of what you love about it. You're loving the world. You're trying to hold on to the world and on to God. And he says, you've got to trust one of them for your blessings. And if you're trusting God, you will be blessed. 1 John 5, 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. What is it? That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Now it has to be according to his will. You see. This isn't just you coming up with it. When Christ said, ask in my name, he wasn't saying add that little phrase like a 
spell of witchcraft and, and it'll all work. He was saying, if you can speak to God the Father as if I were speaking. You know, when uh, David sent people to, his, his men to speak to Nabal and ask for food for those who had been guarding his fields, he said, greet him in my name. So they didn't come say, hi, I'm Joe, and this is Bob, and we just want to say hi. He said, we come to speak for our, our Lord David. And so when you're ready to ask God for something, you need to be able to say, I come representing the will of Christ. What I'm asking is uh, in his name. Let's ask thirdly. All right, this confidence then. In whom are we to have confidence? What and whom are you trusting for your life? Well, negatively, what are not the objects of confidence? Well, idols. You say, Pastor, I don't visit idols. Don't you? Idols are anything that's not God. Are you trusting something that's not God to give you what only God can give? 1 John 5.21, he's writing to a church. Little children, keep yourself from idols. Amen. Why would he say that? Because it may be you're trusting your job to supply your needs. When God says, I'll supply your needs. Say, well, how, why, why do I have a job? Well, he told the man that was a thief, he says, steal no longer, but labor with your hands that you might have to give to those who are in need. God says, you're going to learn by working. You're going to contribute by working. You're going to bless others by working. But that whole thing of taking care of you and your family, I'll take care of that. So listen to this. An idol is anything you trust to provide what only God can truly provide. Money can be an idol. <laughs> Are you, you know, buying the lottery so you could be safe for the rest of your life? Well, read up on what happens to people that win the lottery. Most of them don't have any idea about spending money or they wouldn't be buying lottery tickets. <clears throat> somebody said we're, we're losing out in the, the world education our people don't have science understanding don't have math understanding they're teaching them social skills you know it says we ought to motivate people we ought to create a math tax so we already did it's called the lottery check the uh, check the odds you have a far greater chance of being struck by lightning than winning the lottery. Far, far better. And here on land, you have a better chance of being eaten by a shark than winning the lottery. And the people that win the lottery go bankrupt in the first year. One lady was actually killed because suddenly she had money to fight her, her ex-husband in court, and he couldn't dominate her anymore, so he had her killed. Yay, won the lottery. <laughs> What are you trusting? What are you trusting? Is it money? Our world trusts money. Don't trust men. You may find people are trustworthy, but don't put your trust in them. Listen to Psalm 118, 8 and 9. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in men. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes, the government, bureaucracy. Where do you lay your trust? What are you counting on for your good? And wealth, as we're really focusing upon our, our money and our ability. Psalm 52, 7, Lo, this is the man that had made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. We read that before, but the, this is the point. The, 
What was taking the place of God, confidence in God? Confidence in the abundance of riches. I have enough money. I can do whatever I want. Jeremiah 9.23 Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Glory, boasting. Pride. Mark 10.24 The disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answereth again and said unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? Because their confidence is in their riches. They think riches are a pat on the back from God, even though they perhaps do bad things to gain those riches. God's on my side. 1 Timothy 6.17 Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, proud, nor trust in uncertain riches. <laughs> Ask Dave Tunis about the stock market. What should we trust in? The living God that giveth us richly all things to enjoy. So negatively, idols, men, wealth, no, don't put your trust in them. But positively, we're to have complete confidence in God. Think of his love to us. Psalm 89, 33. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. Whatever's going on, God says, I will not stop being faithful. Isaiah 54, 10. For the mountains shall depart, the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. God's kindness neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. And Isaiah was writing to them at a time when they were being cursed for their sin. Zephaniah 3.17 The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save, deliver you. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. And think of this. He will joy over thee with singing. I'll bet he's bass, bass, bass. It would be great to hear him singing. Romans 8, 38 and 39. Paul was faced with all kinds of problems and life-threatening things. But he said, For I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, powers, things present or things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. <laughs> they can't take that from us, no matter what they take from us. Life, death, it doesn't matter. They can't separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I want you to notice his promise to supply our needs. Don't trust in money to supply your needs, but trust in God. Here's a promise. It's a long one, but we, uh, we ought to be familiar with this. Matthew 6, in the Sermon on the Mount, verses 25 to 34. Therefore I say unto you, Christ said, Take no thought, no worry for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Don't ask an environmentalist this. He will say, no, the birds are a lot better than you are. Deserve a lot more. But he asks God, he says, oh yeah, you're much better. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? That's a cubit, that would be pretty... You could bang yourself on the head and get a bump, but I don't think you could add a cubit. That's like a foot and a half. He says, and, and this word uh, stature could be age. You can't even ex extend your age. You, know, uh, you take all the supplements and vitamins you want, but you're going to die of something someday. <laughs> you can't add anything to it. Why take ye thought for raiment? Your clothing. By the way, I just loved our Ethiopian garments there, many of the traditional things. It's so beautiful. 
not that I could wear it, but I'm just saying, it's just beautiful. He says, consider the lilies of the field. Jerry was talking about that this morning, you know, the beautiful flowers. How they grow, they toil not, they don't go to work, neither do they spin. They don't, they don't spin thread to make into cloth. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory, King Solomon, in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? He says, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. When he says Gentiles, he means the people who don't know God, have no, con uh, have, have no connection to the word of God, who think that everything is based on them. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. And then verse 33 and 34. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you added by God. Therefore take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. It was said of Sir Walter Raleigh that when the Queen of England asked him to come and take over the uh, uh, armada that was protecting England, he said, I would dearly love to do that, but I have uh, much of my uh, livelihood is based on the things here. And she said, if you will take care of my needs, I will take care of your needs here at home. And uh, so it was. And so it is with God. God says, I'm the one that's actually taking care of it. The fourth thing that I'd like to share with you is the encouragement to have confidence in God. Because we're humans living in the human world. And our eyes, like Peter, get off onto the wind and the waves. And we say, ah, now I've got to save myself. Now I've got to take care of myself. Encouragement to have confidence in God. First of all, trust in God for earthly things. Because how do you get them? Well, actually, all things are from him. Acts 17, 25, preaching to the unsaved. Talking about God, he says, He's neither, neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything. We're supplying needs of God. Well, not the true God. Seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Whatever you have, recognize it. You've been given it by God. Romans eleven thirty six. For of him, through him, and to him are all things. To whom be glory forever and ever. Forever. Amen. Where do these things come from that you desire? came from him. 2 Corinthians 5.18 And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given unto us the ministry of reconciliation, given us the job of reconciling the unsaved to him, getting them saved. And what about our stuff? All things are of him. James 1.17 and 18. Make this the blanket statement. Every good gift... And every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of firstfruits of his creatures. He says, you find anything good in this life, it is given to you of God. Secondly, trust in God for spiritual things. Luke 11, uh, 16, 11, if therefore... You have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, or riches. Who will commit to your trust the true riches? He says, if God can't count on you to be faithful in how you deal with your money, faithful to him in how you deal with your money, do you think that he'll entrust you with the true riches, which are much greater than material possessions? What are these things? What are the true riches? Well, your supply of grace which gives you the ability to want and to do of his good pleasure, your eternal life, which only he can supply an eternity 
and your eternal happiness. The third and last is trust in God at all times. Not just in the prosperous times, where we have easy sailing, but even in the tough times. Psalm 62, 8, trust in him at all times. Can he be any clearer? Ye people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. You don't read out loud Selah when you see it. It's a, just a musical term. Two things in this. What about times of fear? We think, I, I, I'm going to have to pick up myself and carry me by my own bootstraps. Times when you may lose your money. Fearful times. I don't know, terrible inflation times. What do you think? Isaiah 50, verse 10. Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness, and hath no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord, and stay. Isaiah would say, mine stayed on thee. Stay upon his God. God is unchanging. Well, everything around us is changing. So focused on him. Micah 7, 8 and 9. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. <laughs> you think you're, you got me, enemy? When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. My greatest problems are worse than your greatest joys because I have the Lord. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. What will he do? He will bring me forth to the light. You might try to put me in the darkness, but he will bring me out. And I shall behold his righteousness. Times of fear. And then in times of death. The time when your money loses all of its value. You can't spend a thing. Psalm 23, 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, the things that chasten me, they comfort me. Why would chastening by God be a comfort? Because he only chastens his children. He loves them and corrects them. Psalm 48, 14, for this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. And Psalm 73, 26, my flesh and my heart faileth. That's true of each of us, isn't it? Day by day, year by year, we can't trust in this strong body of ours. Remember when you could just run forever and walk forever? So you still can. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Let's pray. Father, you've given us an opportunity to understand that confidence in you means that we will not place our confidence, our trust, our love in money or in any other ability that we have in the flesh. Not our strength, not our ability to think, not our ability to produce, not our ability to earn money. For you give us all of those powers. Every good, every perfect gift comes from you. And so we just trust in thee. Therefore, we will do what you say, even if it looks like that will not produce a lot of money. We will be obedient to you. We will not go places you don't want us to go. We will not say things that we ought not to say. We, ought, we will not do things that you tell us are wrong to do. Even though it seems, if we don't, we will lose money. But Father, we're not trusting in money. We're trusting in you. With heads bowed, eyes closed, it may be you're saying, I see the importance of money. The world runs on money, and, and I have bills to pay. 
but it's hard not to trust in that. But I need to put my trust in him. And to look at the money as a means of doing something, the ability to accomplish something, not something to treasure. But my treasure will be stored up in heaven. If that's your prayer, I wonder if you'd slip your hand up. Say, pray for me. Help me to keep this proper priority of life to trust in God and not in money. Pray for me. Is there one? Father, then we bow before you and say, you have earned our trust. You have earned our respect. You have always been faithful, even when we have not. I ask that you might help us, Father, to, to see that money comes and goes, and good times, good prosperous times come and go, but you stay the same, and our hearts may be quieted, our minds may be uh, at perfect peace if we can trust in thee and not in the changing things of life. We pray that you might help us then to be strong in these areas, and we pray it in Jesus' name.